I've got a, a mix of emotions here and thoughts. First, the potential to, as we discussed earlier, identify your most probable conversion customers or customer types and be able to buy those ad, the ads targeting those people, very exciting. Then to further predict the value of each of those customers, which could then inform how much you should spend to acquire them and what you want to offer them, that's all really exciting. And this, this, this entire concept is very powerful, but it also sounds really hard. It sounds like it's going to take a lot of work. And if, I, if I'm a little bit cynical about this, I'd say we've kind of heard some of this before, that the potential is there, but the reality is the data tends to be dirty. The laws are tricky. Uh, people don't want to give the data, or it just takes forever to get it all in one place. Or you get it all in one place, but then the decision engines that drive the actual actions by the, the front end technology of the people don't really happen. So how do we actually make this real? How, how hard is it really to get this done? And is it realistic that we could see something like this in place inside of a, a standard forecasting cycle for a business, like a year? You, either one of you wants to take that one. We're doing this now. The majority of the major banks globally, or particularly in the U.S., are using this. Insurance companies, telecoms. I'm working globally across industry, so this is not vaporware. How long does it take? We can get a first use case for maybe an upsell or retention, this is big in retention, because we can understand when a customer is getting ready to churn, and we can interact with them at the right time with the right offer, um, two, three months to get it up. Now, that's using existing data. We can, as most analytics, we can tell you if we can get this data, we can make it better, and this is growing. It's not gonna be a one-time put it in, plug the product in. It's a black box, but we can get initial use cases up very quickly. And start to get some early payoffs. Start getting early payoffs. There are some very big financial companies, particularly in the US, that have been doing this for a couple of years now. They're the ones looking at the arbitration engine, because it's working. And what they need to do now is arbitrate between the results. So uh, just building on that a bit, the, I mentioned earlier dirty data, right? We all have the problem of the garbage in, garbage out, and that's not a, a particularly easy problem to solve. How would you address the challenge of dirty data, or, or in, in your case, in, use it anyway and still get decent results? Well, you know, the consistency of data, I wouldn't say them dirty. I say that it's more, more sophisticated. It should be, the data should be consistent. And I agree that this may be a challenge. This may be a challenge. From our experience, uh, and by the way, coming to the previous question as well, uh, the implementation from scratch uh, of the particular use case may take around three months. So it's not that long. And uh, if you, uh, you know, how do you eat the elephant? One bite at a time. So we don't build the holistic framework that covers everything. It should be an incrementally added uh, features and incrementally added mm, things to follow and behavior to follow. So from our perspective, the consistency of data may be a challenge and it usually takes two, three weeks for a team of data, for a team of data scientists to just analyze and say, okay, see, this attribute cannot be measured based on the historical data, and this one can. And this is very easy going stuff, so. So let me ask both of you, if you were going to look for that low-hanging fruit early you know, payback thing, is it gonna be at the customer acquisition side? Use the data to help you figure out who to target, where to target, and what to pay for them? Is it on the, uh, the, the lifetime value optimization side, where you figure out, okay, this we've learned from them, we need to know how to optimize that, or, 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 or lookalikes, or what is it? What, where, where do you get that, it, typically, that earliest, lowest hanging fruit? The hardest thing to do is get a new customer. So we focus on the existing customer first. What you want to do is increase share of wallet with them. So we would try to look at what we call an upsell or cross-sell model for them which is customers like this, this is what you should offer them next. If it's personalized and at the right time, it's not intrusive, as opposed to a broad campaign. A lot of companies, like I said, are using this starting out with retention. We have a bad churn problem. Can you predict for us who's gonna churn and what actions we should give them and at what time? You start. The biggest problem we have is IT department saying, our data's not ready, and it's the big data thing. Come back in three years. What we typically say is, we've got enough data to start this now, you can't afford to lose customers or not get the most from your existing customers. Start the process and then perfect the data. So I get that. Um, and 
the challenge I see is a, uh, like looking at hotels. Almost every hotel today has a database of its own and it's doing some blast emails every month or so. Uh, my friends at a company called Revenate, they have a marketing platform with a really good segmentation builder. What they found recently is that, it, that hotels that segment, even basic segments, they, they cheat, give a, you know, divide that database into three big chunks, they're gonna see 70, 80% better performance on that each email campaign than if they just blasted everybody. Well, that's a pretty easy thing to do. It's a lot easier sounding than this. Should we do that first before we worry about AI, or do you think you just jump right to the AI? You see, if even basic segmentation provides such a great result, why don't you need to use a pretty, I wouldn't say it's that sophisticated, pretty affordable artificial intelligence based, intelligence -based uh, implementation? From our perspective and from our practical experience, based on the historical data that our customer provide to us, when you move from segmentation to artificial intelligence-based implementation, you automatically win at least 20%, at least 20% more. And this is just a first step. As soon as you implement first, second, third, fifth, and up to 30, like we can see just while you book the hotel implementations, you may get amazing results. That's my experience. And is this best, uh, should it be the, the chains and OTAs uh, that, that tackle this and, and, and holders, or, or, or can we bring this down to the individual suppliers? My personal experience is with the OTAs, with the hotel chains, mid-sized hotel chains, and with a few airlines, that's it. Start there, but it, for, for now, probably the implementation costs are a bit high uh, for the individual hotel, for example. I would say the basic individual package may start from probably sixty to eighty thousand dollars. Okay. Just to start and to try and to see the ROI. So really, not necessarily out of reach if you have the kind of revenue. I mean, that's not. That's maybe ten more sold rooms per month. To that's pay nothing. This off. Yeah. That's nothing. Yeah. Got it. Excellent. Well, guys, thank you so much for this. We have to move into the next segment, but it's been really great. Steve is going to be the moderator for the rest of the morning, I believe, right? Um, and we've got our next sec section coming up, uh, but thank you guys for your, your comments on this. Thank you, Don. Thank you.